Night and day, at home or away, always carry Tums, T-U-M-S. Tums, famous quick relief for acid indigestion, presents A Date with Judy. Hello, hello, Judy, this is Eleanor. What are you doing this Saturday? Nothing, why? Well, my dad asked me if I could get a girl for a friend of his. Oh, wonderful. What's he like? Well, he's tall and good-looking and has beautiful manners and simply loads of money. Oh, that's terribly exciting. I'll be delighted to go out with him. Oh, you don't understand. That one's for me. Oh, cheaper. <laughs> That's Judy, folks. Judy Foster, the cutest date in town. Your date with her each Tuesday at the same time is arranged by the makers of Tums, famous quick relief for acid indigestion. Well, now let's see what's doing at the Foster house. It's Saturday, and Judy bursts into the house. Mother! Hello, dear. Oh, Mother, this has been absolutely the most thrilling Saturday morning of my whole life. Well, what happened, dear? Don't tell me. Let me guess. Some gazook invited you to the Jitterbug Jamboree. Oh, no, Randolph. That wouldn't mean a thing to me. The men of my generation are so mundane and everything. Well, uh, what did happen, Judy? I saw a train come in. Well, that must have been a thrill. Oh, it was. Why don't you run down to the post office this afternoon and watch somebody mail a letter? <laughs> that ought to make a real full day. Oh, the people in this house are so obtuse and everything. This was a very special train. Oh, you mean it choo-chooed tobacco? <laughs> This was the train that brought a whole bunch of people from Hollywood to town. They're on a camp tour, and they're going to give performances at the army camps in this vicinity. Well, isn't that nice? Nice? It's positively soul-shattering. To think, I was right down there at the station on the same platform with real live movie stars. I always think live movie stars are so much more soul-shattering than dead movie stars, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Randolph. So you were right on the same platform with them, Judy. Uh-huh. Of course, not exactly at the same time. When we got there, they'd already left. But they had been there just a few minutes before. Oh. I walked right through the same station they did. And breathed the same air? Yes. The station still reverberated with their presence. I bet the very walls had goose pimples. <laughs> Mother, please make him stop scoffing at me. Randolph, please stop scoffing at her. Anyhow, <laughs> we caught up with the movie stars on State Street. Oh, you did? Mm -hmm. And you know who was among them? Frank Sinatra. There I was right beside him, only two blocks away. <laughs> what color were his eyes? Oh, Randall. Well, it still sounds like a remote control thrill to me. We were utterly throbbing. Who is we, dear? Barbara and Lulu and Eleanor and Gory and Missy and me. Oh. We pushed our way nearly all the way up to the stars. It was momentous. In Ohio, it will always be remembered as the charge of the Bobby Sox Brigade. Well, this is all very fascinating, but I'm going to turn the radio on. Oh, dear. I don't know how I'll ever recover from this morning. Well, why don't you kind of ease yourself off movie stars by looking through a fan magazine? I think I will. And now a special announcement. A group of movie stars making a camp tour of neighboring camps are facing a difficult problem. Hey, listen. Due to the hotel and housing shortage in this vicinity, the authorities are requesting that the citizens of this community rent any rooms they may have available in their houses. The movie stars who so generously are giving our boys their time and talent are desperately in need of lodging. How superior! If you have any rooms to report, call 3400. Call 3400. Oh, Mother, this is the biggest opportunity we ever had in our lives. What is, dear? Well, Father's out of town, and all you have to do is sleep in the den, Mother, and we can give your room to a movie star. Well, I don't think I'd like sleeping in the den, even for the sake of a movie star. But, Mother, you heard how generously they're giving their time and talent. I know, I'll sleep in the den. And then I can always tell everybody, as long as I live, that once, when I was a girl, Frank Sinatra used my room. <laughs> Why, you'll be famous. People come from many lands just to look at you. Now, wait a minute. If we lend any rooms in this house, it's going to be Randolph's room. Mine? Yes, yes. You'll fit the sofa much better than Judy or me. But I don't want to tell everybody that once, when I was a girl, Frank Sinatra used my room. <laughs> Well, nevertheless, you're the one who's going to sleep in the den, Randolph. Oh, Mother, you're really going to do it? Give him a room, I mean. 
Oh, Mother, you're the most adorable, unselfish, sweetest girl that Mother ever had. <laughs> oh, I'm doing this purely for patriotic reasons, Judy. And so she can tell everybody once when she was middle-aged, Frank Sinatra used her son's room. Oh. <laughs> Judy, uh, what was that number the man said to call? 3400. And be sure and say we're especially anxious to have Frankie. All right, dear. Mother, while you make the call, I'm going to run over to Lulu's house and tell her all about Frank Sinatra and me. What about Frank Sinatra and you? About what I'm going to say to him and how we're going to sing duets together. Now, wait a minute, Judy. I don't want to fall, uh, throw cold water on all your fine plans, but remember that we may not get Frank Sinatra. After all, there are other movie stars in the group. Why, yeah, we might wind up with nothing better than Cary Grant or something. Mother! Mother! Yes, dear? What happened with the call you made? Well, I told them about Randolph's room, and they're going to call me back and let me know. What happened over at Lulu's house? Not a thing. Except that I will never speak to Lulu Benson again as long as I live. Why, dear? Because as soon as I told her about this room lending stuff, she went right to the phone and offered her Uncle Herman's room. What did Uncle Herman say? He said he was gold darn if he'd sleep in the garage for any old swooner crooner. Hmm. Uncle Herman and I are brothers under the skin. But Lulu did it anyhow. I may be able to move over on the den sofa and make room for Uncle Herman. And that wasn't bad enough. But Lulu told Mitzi and Eleanor and Tootsie all about it, and they've all offered rooms, and now they're all squabbling over Frankie. And the one who gets him wins a big black cigar. Oh, it's simply terrible. Now, none of the girls in our crowd are talking to any of the other ones. An uncanny silence has settled over the town. <laughs> well, anyway, I bet the authorities are pretty pleased with the public spirit of our citizens. Well, Uncle Herman and I wish to go on record as having no public spirit whatsoever. Oh, Randolph, you burn me up. Honestly, the way you talk. The phone! It may be frightened. I'll take it. Hello? Yes, yes it is. Who is it, dear? The authorities. You will use our room? Yes, yes. Oh. What happened? But my mother made a special request for Frank Sinatra. Oh, no, all right. Thank you. Well, speak, woman. I'm all a flutter. Do you know who got Frankie? Whom? Tootsie Whiteman. Oh, that's too bad, dear. Of all the girls in this town, why did it have to be Tootsie? She is my least favorite person in all the world. Oh, why didn't I know enough to keep my big mouth shut about Frankie? Yeah, if you hadn't let the girls in on everything, you could have just sneaked up on him yourself. No, I'll never be able to live in the same town with Tootsie. Nope. She'll brag the rest of her life about this. Yep. Nope. This town isn't big enough to hold the both of us. Nope. Uh, did the authorities turn us down completely? Nope. They want our room all right. Oh, I can't wait. Whom did we draw? Oh, I don't know. Just some man. I never even heard of him. Well, did he come with the troop? Yeah. He's probably just some big movie producer or something. Oh, is that all? Well, uh, Randolph, I think you'd better start moving some of that junk out of your room. The baseball bats and the canoe paddles in the museum. Not my museum of natural history, Mother. Now, Randolph, no one human would be able to sleep in the same room with that stuffed frog. <laughs> well, I do. You're not human. Just, uh... <laughs> Well, put everything in the den, Randolph. Your caterpillar collection, too. Oh, Mother, I hate to disturb them just when they're thinking about spinning cocoons. Well, they can spin cocoons in the den just as well as in your room. Oh, okay. Oh, I wish I'd never started this. Jeepers, think of listening to Tootsie Whiteman talking about Frank Sinatra the rest of her life. Think of listening to anybody talk about Frank Sinatra the rest of her life. But I'd like to talk to Sinatra the rest of my life. I mean the rest of my natural life. Well, Judy certainly has a way of getting herself involved in situations. But you uh, men in our audience have your problems, too. You bounce out of bed in the morning, shave, shower, gulp down your food, kiss the missus goodbye, dash for the train or bus. When you get to the office, if you don't have acid indigestion or heartburn, well, you've got the nearest thing to them. Now, for quick relief, for quick, safe, pleasant relief, take Tums. These delicious antacid mints melt on your tongue in a jiffy. Almost instantly, they neutralize the excess acid in your stomach. And then it's goodbye heartburn and goodbye acid indigestion. That's why millions of people, night and day, at home or away, keep Tums handy. Why don't you join them today? Get Tums at any drugstore, ten cents a roll or a three roll package for a quarter. Tums for the tummy, T-U-M-S. And now, back to A Date with Judy. Well, a troupe of movie stars is in the town Judy lives in for the present. 
Because of the housing shortage, they're in need of rooms to stay in, and the Fosters are going to lend Rand out. However, all the girls in Judy's crowd have a room to lend, and Judy is very unhappy about this. Just now, the doorbell is ringing at the Foster house. The doorbell? That must be our big movie producer or somebody. Oh, Randolph, did you get your room all cleared out? Yeah, all but the caterpillars. What happened to them? Oh, I, I spilled them. You spilled them? Yeah, I managed to catch up with most of them, but a couple got away under the bed. Oh, Randolph, I could simply spank you. Caterpillars under the poor man's bed. How do you do? Oh, how do you do? I'm Mrs. Foster. Uh, I'm Mr. Ryan. I believe you have a room for me. Oh, yes, I do. Won't you come in? Well, Mrs. Foster... You don't know what it means to me to have a nice bed to sleep in tonight. Our troops had some pretty rough going for the last few days. Oh, is that so? Yes, place I was stranded in last night. Well, you know, I wouldn't have been surprised if there were bed bugs in that bed. Really? Well, I wouldn't be surprised if there were caterpillars uh, in uh, Randolph! <laughs> uh, this is my son, Randolph. How do you do? Oh, hi, Mr. Ryan. I also have a daughter, Judy. And if you're a friend of Frank Sinatra's, you won't fail to meet her. <laughs> Uh, another one of the worshippers? Oh, yes. You know how young girls are. I certainly do. We've been shaking them out of our hair ever since we started the tour. Well, Judy doesn't shake very easily. I'm sure I won't have any trouble with her. <laughs> well, Mrs. Foster... Oh, oh, I know. You're anxious to go up to your room, aren't you? Well, come right this way. Thank you. I hope you have a good night's sleep. Oh, I know I will. Yeah, but will my caterpillars have a good night's sleep? <laughs> Judy, eat your eggs, dear. I'm not very hungry, Mother. She dreamt last night that Sinatra married Tootsie Whiteman. Keep quiet, Randolph. Good morning. Oh, good morning, Mr. Ryan. Won't you come in and have some breakfast? Well, I'd love to. Sit right here. Uh, Mr. Ryan, this is my daughter, Judy. How do you do? I'm very happy to meet you. Two lumps, Mr. Ryan? Just one, thing. Did you sleep well? Oh, splendidly. Only, I had the strangest dream last night. I felt like something was crawling over my neck. Oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> Suppose I was still a little shaken from those suspected bed bugs of the night before. Oh, mm. uh, really? Uh, by the way, uh, did you happen to find a cocoon under your chin this morning? A what? Oh, uh, never mind, Randolph, Mr. Ryan. That's just the way he talks. Uh, well, uh, which camp are you visiting today? Oh, the one on the Pike Road. We're entertaining the boys there this afternoon, then tonight we Mr. move... Mr. Ryan... Um, are you a big movie producer? Who, me? No, I'm afraid not. My job is much more humble than that. I'm just an old-fashioned song plugger. A song plugger? So what's that? Well, that's a long story. I'd better not go into it. Mr. Ryan, um, do you know Mr. Sinatra very well? Oh, well enough to slap him on the back now and then. When you get through, is he still standing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he can take it. Well, Judy, as a matter of fact, I arranged some of Sinatra's music. Oh, how utterly wonderful. Judy wishes she knew Sinatra well enough to slap him on the back. Well, no. <laughs> you mustn't mind them, Mr. Ryan. They talk that way to each other all the time. But underneath it all, they're just crazy about each other. Personally, there are some caterpillars I like as much as I do Judy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've enjoyed everything so much. And now, if you'll excuse me, I got to meet Mr. Sinatra. You do? How utterly delirious. Doesn't it just make you quiver all over? <laughs> I haven't quivered in years. Well, thanks a lot, Mrs. Foster. Uh, don't get up. I'll find my way out. And thanks again. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, isn't he gorgeous? Isn't he adorable? Uh-uh-uh. Oh, you're being tickled to Frankie. I know, but I can't help it. Oh, Judy, do you have to get a crush on every man you meet? Oh, Mother, that's absolutely ridiculous. I hardly ever go gaga about anybody. Anyhow, she's been able to resist Oogie Pringle. Oh, Oogie Pringle, that infant. Well, he's six months older than you, Judy. Girls are always eons older than boys. As a matter of fact, I don't feel 16 at all. I feel 18 at least. You just missed two of the best years of your life. <laughs> Mother, do you think I'm old enough to get married? I certainly do not. Marie Antoinette got married when she was only 15. And Cleopatra... Will you stop talking about getting married, Judy, and pull up your bobby socks? Yeah, they're drooling all over your shoes. <laughs> Are you thinking about getting married, Judy? Well, not exactly married, but it would be sort of nice to be engaged. Oh, well, who have you got in mind? None of your business. Well, I'd sort of like to know. I feel it's my duty to warn the victim. I have, I have absolutely no intentions of revealing any information whatsoever. Only, only what, Judy? Isn't Mr. Ryan beautiful? <laughs> Judy, when are you going to bed? 
Why, it's 11.30. I'm just sort of waiting up for Mr. Ryan to come home. Well, heaven knows when he'll come home. Hollywood people probably stay up until all hours of the night. Mother, would you like to live in Hollywood? No, thank you. I'm quite content right here, no how. Not even for a visit, Mother? Well, as yet, Mr. Sinatra hasn't invited me. Oh, I don't mean to visit Mr. Sinatra. I mean to visit me. Well, I wasn't aware you'd settled down in Hollywood yet, Judy. Oh, I haven't yet. But I was just thinking... I wonder what it would be like to be married to a song plugger. Oh, no. You're not likely to find out. Now, run along to bed. If I lived in Hollywood, maybe I can get in the movie. When are you going to bed, Judy? I'm just going to stay up half an hour more, Mother. All right, dear. Half hour, that's all. Then I'm going upstairs. it would take a lot more than entire Hollywood to keep me up any longer. Good night, Mother. Good night, dear. I just adore you, Mr. Ryan. Rally, I do rally. Rally, rally? No. I think you have beautiful eyes, Mr. Ryan. I think I go home with you. No. Definitely no. Come up and see me. 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 Could be. Oh, it's you, Mr. Ryan. Well, hello. My goodness, I forgot all about you staying at our house. Why, when you came in just now, why, you were the last person I expected to see. Well, now, I thought I'd made more of an impression on you than that. Oh, you have. Oh, Mr. Ryan, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. I, I know. You can't think of anybody else but Sinatra. Well, he is rather attractive, and he does sing well, but... But the main reason you like him so much is because all the other girls do, too, and you don't want to be different? No, but... Mr. Ryan, do you think a girl my age is old enough to get engaged? Engaged? Why, Judy? I mean, does it make so much difference that a man is a few years older? After all, even if it were ten years, what difference would it make? When he's 90, she'd be 80, and I don't see what... Judy, I think I'd better have a little talk with you. This sounds serious. Oh, it is, Mr. Ryan. It's the most serious thing that ever happened to me. Sit down, Judy. Now let's talk this thing over. Oh, I'd love to. Judy, do you think it's right to fall in love with a married man? A married man? Oh, Mr. Ryan! With two children? Two children? Oh, how awful! Don't you see that the object of your affection is very far from attainment? Well, a wife and two children is kind of an obstacle. Yes. <laughs> One that you could hardly overcome. Two whole children? How dreadful! Well, it's not dreadful at all. About having two children, I mean. But what's really dreadful is that a nice young girl like you who must have... Lots of boyfriends her own age. But, Mr. Ryan, boys my own age are so... Well, they're so young. Quite true. But that makes you kind of young, too. To tell the truth, Judy, you're the Bobby Sox Brigade. Bobby Sox... And if you'll take the advice of an old gent who's been around, you'll stop thinking about older men and concentrate on the fun you can have with boys your own age. Oh, I couldn't. I couldn't. I'll never get over this. It'll take weeks. <laughs> well, you'll recover. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going out to my room. Mr. Ryan. Yes? Good night. <laughs> Judy, isn't it time for you to be in bed? I think I'll stay up a while yet. I may... Well, I may write a piece of poetry. It's a very good idea. Get it off your chest, and in the morning you'll feel like a new woman. Well, good night. Good night. See you tomorrow. Bobby Socks Brigade. Doesn't he realize I am a woman? Well, it's only human for Judy to feel the way she does. And, folks, it's only human at times to overindulge, to overeat, oversmoke, or worry. And then, sure as shooting, you may suffer a spell of acid indigestion. So what? There's a drugstore handy, isn't there? And right out there on the counter are stacks and stacks of neat little rolls of Tums. Ten cents a roll, three roll package for a quarter. As pleasant to take as candy mints. There's nothing to mix, nothing to stir. You just slip one or two Tums in your mouth, and almost instantly you neutralize the excess acid in your stomach. Gone is the heartburn and that uncomfortable full feeling and other signs of acid indigestion. Another beauty about Tums is that they contain no soda or other water-soluble alkalis. No, sir. Tums act in an entirely different way from most other antacids. They never over-alkalize your stomach or cause an acid rebound or relapse. 
That's just one of the reasons why millions, night and day, at home or away, always keep Tums handy. Tums for the tummy, T-U-M-S. And now back to A Date with Judy. Well, Judy has acquired quite a crush on the man from Hollywood to whom the Fosters have loaned a room. Judy has tried to declare her love, but the man thought she was talking about Sinatra the whole time. When we pick up the Fosters again, it's the next morning. Good morning, Mr. Ryan. Good morning, Mrs. Foster. Did you sleep well? Oh, fine. But I had the same darn dream again last night about something crawling over my neck. Oh, oh what a strange dream. Uh, oh, Mr. Ryan. Yes? Well, I, I think this might amuse you. I don't want you to let Judy know that I showed you to you, but just now I found this piece of paper on the desk. She must have written it last night. Poetry, huh? Yes. Now, let me see. Hmm. I've got the Bobby Sox blues. I'm just a girl who's got the Bobby Sox blues. My pulse is pounding and my heart is wild, but people say you're just a child. Yes, it's rather sad, isn't it? But can't you see that even at 16, the pangs are mean, the pain is... Why, well, it's beautiful, Mrs. Foster. I rather thought so, too. I had no idea that Judy felt this way. <laughs> That's Sinatra. He certainly gets them, doesn't he? Sinatra? Well, oh, yes. Yes, I guess he does. Mrs. Foster, you know what I'd like to do? I know what? I'd like to write some music for this. Some music, really? Sure, I think it would make a lovely ballad. Why, who knows? I may even get Sinatra to sing it. Oh, Mr. Ryan, how wonderful. Why, Judy will be thrilled to pieces. Hello, Lulu. This is Judy. Yes, I know I'm not talking to you, but there's something I want to tell you. Well, guess who's going to sing a song I wrote? Why, none other than Frankie, that's all. No, not Frankie Roosevelt. Frankie Sinatra. <laughs> Honestly, Lulu. Oh, I'm just so excited. Mr. Ryan, who's staying at our house, has written the music, and he's going to get Frankie to sing it at the army camp tonight, and I'm going to be there and shake hands with Sinatra, and Mr. Ryan is going to take me out to the camp personally. And, oh, Lulu, isn't it marvelous? Well, that's what I wanted to tell you. Now we can go right back to not talking to each other. Goodbye. <laughs> That was a very interesting conversation. I liked it, Randolph. Da -da 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 -da. Here we go again. Hello. Oh, Ubi, what do you want? I'm terribly sorry, Ubi, but I can't see you tonight. As it happens, I have a date with an older man. I'm driving out to an army camp with Mr. Ryan. He is not an old bazook. He may be ten years older than I am, but he's still able to drive a car. Men of your age do not interest. You're really just a child to me. I think you should stop running after girls my age and concentrate on younger women. Women about 12 or 13. Oogie, <laughs> I'm ter terribly sorry you're jealous. But I can't help it if older men are attracted to me. Now, can I? Boy, can she dish out the bosh. Well, so long, Oogie. Bye. That was my favorite conversation. Oh, be quiet, Randall. How do you like my manicure? Some manicure? Since when do they paint nails all the way up to the wrist? <laughs> it's gorgeous. Do you think Mr. Ryan will notice it when he shakes hands with me tonight? No, but he may notice the dirt on your face. Oh, don't be silly. I'm going to wash it. But first, I'm going to give myself a mud pack. Well, what do you know? All this time, I thought you were giving yourself one right now. Not even your nasty remarks can bother me today. Oh, Randolph, this is going to be the biggest night in my whole life. Hello there. Why, oh, Mr. Ryan, why'd you come home in the middle of the day? Oh, I came back here to pack. Yes, we're leaving town right away. Leaving town? Oh, Mr. Ryan, you can't. Oh, I forgot. Your song. Judy, I feel terrible disappointing you this way, but the camp we're going to play tonight, <laughs> the boys in the barracks have broken out with measles and we can't go. Oh, Mr. Ryan. So we're lighting right out for Hollywood. I'm really awfully sorry we can't do your song tonight, but anyhow, here's the music I wrote for it. You can keep it and do anything you like with it. Thank you. Judy, I'm really awfully sorry. It was... Well, it was the nicest song that anybody ever wrote about Sinatra. Oh, it isn't about Sinatra. It isn't? No, it's about you. Oh, it's about uh, me? Oh, for heaven's sake. Well, excuse me. I've got to hurry if I want to catch that train. I'll have to rush like I'm in the train. Oh, Randolph, I'm devastated. Well, anyhow, you won't have to wash your face. Oh, Randolph, I'm dying. That dying might be a very good idea. Judy, you frighten me. What are you going to do? 
call up Oogie and tell him I'm not doing anything tonight. Oh, Mother! Mother! Yes, dear? I have the most soul-shattering news. Guess what? I give up. Oogie and his high school hot licks are going to play at the Jitterbug Jamboree tonight, and he's going to let me sing my song. Why, how nice of Oogie. Yes, I'm going to be his girl vocalist, and you're going to announce me, Randolph. Me? Oh, Judy, I wouldn't be seen dead at a Jitterbug Jamboree. You will tonight. Oh, Mother, I'm so thrilled. Just wait till people hear me. Well, it all sounds very exciting, dear. Oh, it is. Everything's all arranged. Now, if I only knew how to sing. <laughs> And now my sister, I mean Miss Judy Foster, will render a song of her own composition and somebody else's music, The Bobby Sox Blues. I've got the Bobby Sox Blues. I'm just a girl who's got the Bobby Sox Blues. My pulse is pounding and my heart is wild. But people say you're just a child. This love's too much for me to bear. They won't believe me and they couldn't care. They inform me I'm not old enough. They say puppy love stops. You wouldn't have the faintest idea of the feel of love, what it's made of. But can't they see that even at 16, the pangs are mean, the pain is keen. My song of love is unsung. But they think, babe, you're too young. They only see my socks and flat heel shoes. And that's why I've got the Bobby Sox Blues. Well, uh, while we're on the subject of the blues... I wonder, did the mailman happen to bring you a spell of acid indigestion this morning? Alas, these days, the news causes many a parent, many a wife to worry and fret. And worry is one of the commonest causes of acid indigestion. Here's a good rule to follow. Night and day, at home or away, always have Tums handy. It's simply amazing the way Tums banish heartburn, that uncomfortable full feeling, and other signs of excess stomach acidity. And Tums are as easy and pleasant to take as candy mints. Nothing to mix or stir. You don't even need water. In a movie or streetcar or the office, you can slip one in your mouth unnoticed. Almost instantly, you enjoy dependable relief from that upset acid stomach. At all drugstores, only ten cents a roll, three roll package for a quarter. Now, there are many imitations of Tums, but no substitute for them. So be sure to ask for Tums for the Tummy. T U M S. Folks, I'd like a moment to talk to you about winning this war. Hundreds of thousands of women are needed immediately in war production plants, in essential civilian services, and in the women's branches of the armed forces. They are the only source of labor available to replace the men who are fighting for us. Now, if you are willing to do your part, go to your local U.S. employment office. They'll tell you where you are needed most. In a nation at war, women must work as men must fight. Thank you. A Date with Judy is written by Aline Leslie and stars Louise Erickson and Dix Davis. The music was composed by Paul Sortel and conducted by Konstantin Bakalenikov through the courtesy of RKO Studios. The program was produced and directed by Helen Mack. This is Art Baker inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday at the same time to keep your date with Judy. And remember, night and day, at home or away, always carry Tums, T-U-M-S. This is the National Broadcasting Company.